Hello and greetings to all. On the onset, I would like to thank each one of you for rising to the occasion over the past two years and embracing technology and newer ways of teaching and learning. Each student and parent have been gracious enough in accepting and adapting to the technological advancements we have made from time to time. Time being our biggest teacher and the need to change with times being the only constant, we keep upgrading ourselves and the applications we use from time to time. Today, I would like to recap and also roll out a few new functionalities in our Quest ERP and Quest Plus Learning App. Moving on to the Quest ERP. The Quest ERP helps in communication between the school, the students, the parents, and the teacher. It helps in the daily functioning, like your attendance, your marks, your fee payment, etc. Now, to go to the ERP, you can go to your respective school website, for example, singhaniaschool.org, and you see the Quest ERP logo. Click on this logo and it takes you to the ERP website. Now that you have landed on the ERP website, you can see three sets of logins. You could have a student, parent, or a teacher or staff login. So select whichever login you would be, either a student or a parent. And for ease of operation for students and teachers, we have made all their login IDs as the school G Suite ID. So it would be your first name, last name, and your singhaniaschools.org. So put in your user ID, which is your school email ID, and your password. In case you have forgotten your password, you can use the forgot password option over here, and the password reset link is sent to your school email ID. Now, to reset a password after you have logged in, you can do the following steps. Click on the man icon that you see in your top right hand corner. Click on change password. Once you have clicked on the change password option, you will see three text fields, your current password and two fields for your new password. So key in your current password. That's a password you use to log in. You can set a new password. Just a word of caution, your new password should be same as your confirmed password. This is just a step to check that the password you're keying in again is the same as the password you have put in for your new password. Click on save and your password is saved. Now, how to check and submit homework and assignments. Every teacher would be uploading homework or assignments on your Quest ERP from time to time. This is very similar to what we would have done on a Google Classroom. The only difference being over here is we do not have separate classrooms. You see all the homework or assignments that has been assigned to you in a tabular form and with it comes the subject. So you know that each subject has been assigned a particular assignment or a subject has been assigned multiple assignments over a period of time. Now, when a teacher uploads your assignment, you would have a date of uploading, a submission date, which is your due date and a date of evaluation. Now, if you click on these three lines in your right hand, you will see a pop-up window which gives you more details on your homework. So it would be instructions from the teacher with again your upload date, your submission date or your due date and the date that it was evaluated. Now a status over here shows that it is incomplete because this has been assigned by the teacher recently and needs to be worked on. If you see the download button over here, you can click on it and download the worksheet or the assignment that has been uploaded by the teacher so that you can then work on it and submit it back to the teacher. 
So download the worksheet or the assignment by clicking on the download button here. And once you are done with the assignment or the homework that has been assigned to you, you can click on the upload option. There's an arrow which is facing upwards. You can click on the upload option and there is a message box that pops up over here. Now you can write a message to your teacher. It could be anything, a query or something that you would like to bring to her notice. You can drag your file and the file, I would like all of you to put it in a PDF format so that it doesn't change or it cannot be changed once uploaded. So just drag your file into this box over here or you can just click over here, select the location that the file has been saved at and click on upload. Now, once this is done, your assignment is uploaded and sent to your teacher for evaluation or to go through. Now, how to use the download center? Now, a download center will have your assignments, your study material. This could be something which is over and above your textbooks. It could be a presentation, it could be a video, a link to something. So your study material, your syllabus for the year and other downloads like it could be your picnic consent forms, it could be something like, a, you know, a health form which needs to be filled by you and brought back to your class teacher. So all of this could be found in these other downloads. It's so basically general information, general forms that you need to fill or general applications that you would have to do from a time to time basis. You all find it in your download center. You can click on the download arrow that you see on the right hand side to download any of the material that you would like to download from either assignments, study material, syllabus or other downloads. How to view your exam result. This can be viewed by both parents and students. Now to view your exam result, click on the examinations link on your left hand side menu. Below that, you will see an exam result. Once you click on that, your page will have a link which says click here to view the mark sheet. Since we are in the process of rolling out your term one exams, this is where you need to go to download your report cards. So parents and students both can do this. This is how you will have your mark sheet that you have downloaded or your report card and you can view it you can download it and keep it in your desktops or laptops. And this is how you will view your mark sheet. You can download it so that you can keep it for your future reference as well. How to view your attendance. The attendance can be viewed by students and parents alike. To view your attendance, click on the attendance link on the left hand menu bar and you can view your attendance for the month. There is a key at the bottom to help you read your attendance. Like if you were absent, that day would be marked in red. If you're present, like you can see, this has all the days that were working as green, it will be marked in green. If you were late to school, it would be marked in yellow. If you've taken a half day, for either medical reasons or any other reason, it would be marked in orange and holidays in the month are marked as gray. So if you see this particular student that we have extracted the attendance for has just a green and a gray, which means he was present for all the working days in the month. How to view a timetable. Now this timetable is collated Keeping in mind your class timetable. So the exact timetable is reflected on the ERP. This will help you plan better for your day and it is viewable by students and parents alike. How to pay your school fees. This is available only in the parent login. And this is something parents have been coming to us as a query multiple times. So it's a recap that I will be doing now. To pay your fees, Click on the fee option in the left hand menu and you will see your student details. Once you do that, you can click on the fee tab and you are taken to all the fees that are applicable for the current year or any previous year balances. 
please note you cannot pay a fee unless you have cleared the previous dues for example you cannot pay a term 2 term fee unless the tuition fees for the previous two quarters are paid so you can now select whichever fee you would like to pay for example your quarter 2 and quarter 3 and then you can collect the selected fees click on that option you get a window which pops up which gives you an option to pay the fee click on pay select your mode of payment it could be either card net banking or upi make the payment by entering the required details and then you get a transaction successful screen you can take a screenshot of the screen or you could also download the receipt from your fee tab wherein you can see a printer icon on the right hand side next to every fee that has been paid click on the printer icon and download the fee receipt for the fee that you have paid how to pay miscellaneous fees again this option is available only from the parent login to pay miscellaneous fees the procedure is very much similar to payment of fees it's just that you have to click on the link which says miscellaneous fees in your left hand menu bar once you click on that you will see your student details click on the miscellaneous or the fee option over there select the miscellaneous fees it could be a miscellaneous fees for your stationery any previous balance that has not been paid or any penalty which was given to you once you select that pay selected fees option should be clicked you get a pop-up window which has the pay option click on the pay option select your mode of payment cards net banking or upi enter the required details for the payment and make the payment once the payment is done you see a transaction successful screen you could either take a screenshot of this or download the receipt from your miscellaneous free page how to apply for leave leave application can be done only from a parent login to apply for leave click on apply leave in your left hand menu bar then click on the add option that you see on top once you click on the add option you will see a pop-up window which allows you to apply for the leave you have an application date or an apply date which is usually the current date select the class that your ward is from the from and the to date in case you are applying for just a day's leave your from date and your to date will remain the same you can give jot down a reason in case you want to it's not mandatory and you can also attach a document like it could be a medical certificate in case you need to or if required by the school so either drag the medical certificate here or click and select the location where the file is stored now in case of a long leave it is always advisable that the long leave is applied for in advance you can select your time duration the from date to date mention a reason and click on save please remember the fields that are marked with the red asterisk are required and need to be filled you do not have to upload a document and give a reason every time if not required once you click on save the leave application is sent to the respective coordinator or head of the section for approval we at singanya schools are looking forward to each one of you having a smooth and enriching experience using all our applications take care and happy learning to you dear students thank you